fighting games a necessity for gracious living. Throughout the 90s, two premier development houses and publishers responsible for pioneering the way forward for this genre were Capcom and SNK. These two Japanese arcade giants would regularly go neck and neck in contests to create the most lucrative and innovative fighting games possible. This rivalry, which is now the stuff of legends, would see franchises such as Street Fighter and The King of Fighters progressively get better and better. So, you can imagine the uproar one year when readers misread a magazine cover that had King of Fighters vs Street Fighter on the front. The publication, which was reporting on both King of Fighters 98 and Street Fighter Alpha 3, would send fans who were pining for a crossover into a false frenzy. However, gamers would not have to wait much longer for this unlikely scenario to become a reality, as the two companies would sign a deal to begin publishing Capcom vs SNK games. To this day, the Capcom produced fighting game known as Capcom vs SNK2 is often considered one of the greatest vs fighters of all time, with the title still having an audience right up until this very day. With interest still existing around these now iconic crossover video games, there have been some interesting interviews in the last few years that have not only allowed us to learn more about this series development, but even revealed to the the world that a Capcom vs SNK 3 was, at one point, being developed to add to this amazing crossover series. In today's episode, looking at yet another lost video game sequel, we're going to go back and look at the story behind this unreleased video game, its production and ultimately how it would end up being left on the cutting room floor. I am Lady Decade and this is the story of Capcom vs SNK3, the sadly lost sequel. While many people are aware of these crossover games and just as many are aware of the many fighting games from these two companies, what fewer people will be aware of is that both Capcom and SNK fighting games have always been intrinsically linked since pretty much day dot. For example, the original Street Fighter arcade game which was released by Capcom in 1987 was directed by a man named Takashi Nishiyama. Nishiyama just so happens to be exactly the same man who would leave Capcom and defect to SNK, where he would begin working on his Street Fighter game's spiritual sequel, a little title featuring a chap called Terry Bogard, and that would come to be known as Fatal Fury. Nishiyama planted the seeds for two of the most important fighting game franchises ever created. Fatal Fury would see a release the same year that Capcom would release another Street Fighter of their very own. This one of course being the legendary Street Fighter 2, the very fighting game that would go on to shape the whole fighting game medium and the future of the field for years to come. Capcom and SNK would fire back at each other year in and year out, with high quality fighting game after high quality fighting game, each cultivating their own unique dedicated audiences as time would pass by. While many would have imagined that this would result in a lot of competitiveness and bad blood between the two companies, behind the scenes many employees from the competing entities remained close friends. One example of this would be between former Capcom employee and Street Fighter creator Nishiyama himself and Capcom's development ahead of the later 90s, Yoshiki Okamoto. One afternoon they met for a casual lunch and they began to fantasize about how great Capcom and SNK crossovers could be and agreed between themselves that they would work together to make their bosses let them make their ideas a reality. These two men's relationship was not the only friendship documented between the two companies. Capcom's general producer Noritaki Funamizu and SNK's planner Hideyaki Itsuno were also good friends and privately Capcom's CEO 
Kenzo Tsujimoto and SNK's founder Ikechi Kawasaki would also regularly speak. To add to this story, just for fun, programmers and designers who worked at SNK during the development of King of Fighters 98 would, in their downtime, even program Nyu and Ken into their fighting game purely for their amusement to play with at the office, an endeavour which would also see them adding Goku from Dragon Ball Z to the title too. History shows that it would not be long before crossover games developed by Capcom and SNK would become an official reality, as this deal would seem highly beneficial for both companies. On one hand, it gave Capcom new material to put out another 2D fighting game for the arcades and consoles, but more importantly, the working relationship was agreed upon to help push Neo Geo's new pocket handhelds, a device I really should make a video on at some point soon. Having Capcom characters present on Neo Geo's portable machine would provide the hardware with some great additional recognisable IPs in terms of marketing appeal. 1999 would not just see SNK vs Capcom, the match of the millennium on the portable, a pocket sized fighting game, but also SNK vs Capcom Card Fighters Clash, a card game that would feature characters representative of both Japanese brands. Amusing anecdotes can be found online with regards to the development of these crossovers. For example, Toyohisa Tanabe of SNK Japan notes that during the working relationship, staff from both companies would have Capcom vs SNK drinking competitions, and that there was so much love for the card game Yu-Gi-Oh between the Japanese programming nerds that they would have Capcom vs SNK Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments during their lunch hours too. Pretty endearing stuff. On the Capcom side of things, they would release three Capcom vs SNK crossover fighting games in just 12 months. Capcom vs SNK Millennium Fight, an enhanced iteration of the same game known as Capcom vs SNK Pro, and of course, Capcom vs SNK 2, mark of the millennium 2001, the most refined game of the lot, which brought in a six button control scheme offering up an awesome fighting game affair. Capcom would make decent profits from these three games. Eclipsing the popularity of their Street Fighter brand with the Capcom vs SNK titles being more commercially successful than the three iterations that they had published of Street Fighter 3. Holding this thought and the pace that Capcom would produce games at, it is probably not surprising to you that work on a Capcom vs SNK 3 would soon commence. Rumours of the existence of this canned game began to be backed up in 2018 when former King of Fighters series director Toyohisa Tanabe alongside Takayuki Nakayama on Capcom's Shadowloo Research Institute website would reference an unnamed cancelled project that was in the works before the development of Capcom Fighting All-Stars, another scrapped Capcom game. In 2021, a year that has provided us with plenty of new information on projects of old, it was confirmed once and for all that this game was indeed Capcom vs SNK 3. In an interview with Polygon, Hideaki Itsuno, the same man who directed Capcom vs SNK 2, stated that shortly after completing work on that game, he would begin working on its sequel. Here he reveals that originally Capcom vs SNK 3 was intended to be yet another 2D fighting game in the series and was being programmed to see release for the PlayStation 2. However, as development pushed on, it was decided that they would rework the title into a 3D fighting game instead. This remains one of the most mysterious unreleased games in history, with no gameplay or screenshots of this project being made available yet. However, the scrappage of this game was not due to the development process proceeding poorly like with many projects, but instead SNK deciding to file for bankruptcy. You see, with arcade gaming being on the decline on the whole, for years SNK had mainly relied on its fighting games to continue to bring home the bacon, and after a solid decade of making video games for this genre, this style of play was beginning to become fatigued too. 
Through this period, SNK had scrambled its resources together in an attempt to diversify its place in the market, which is where, of course, the Neo Geo Pocket handhelds came in, devices that Takashi Nishiyama had so little faith in succeeding that he would depart from SNK before any of the SNK vs Capcom games even saw release. A real shame, as they are titles that in many ways celebrated his life's work. History now shows that the Neo Geo Pocket plan did indeed fail, with the final game in the SNK vs Capcom collection released for the hardware in 2001, being SNK vs Capcom Card Fighters 2 Expand Edition. The system simply could not compete with the Game Boy Advance, hardware with a gaming library that had SNK's handheld defeated at every level. So, with bankruptcy taking place, Capcom vs SNK 3 was cancelled, along with any other Capcom SNK crossover projects. During this period, the company would be acquired by Aruz, an entity known for making money from pachinko machines. Rather than using SNK's rich library of IPs to produce new video games, instead, they wanted to shamelessly use the characters and licenses to promote people to gamble on their pachinko devices. This was a very sad state of affairs. During this dark era, with Aruz having zero interest in developing games, Capcom would employ about 20 of SNK's previous staff members, including Toyohisa Tanabe, who would end up being deployed to work on Capcom Fighting All-Stars, the game that would eventually have its assets and ideas reused for the production of Capcom Fighting Evolution. Fortunately, this would not be the end of the SNK tale, as the company founder Kawasaki would begin a new company known as Playmore, an entity which he would use to successfully buy all of the rights to his SNK properties back, even going on to rehire many SNK staff members in the process. Fortunes would continue to turn around for the SNK brand in October of 2002, when Kawasaki managed to sue Aruz for an astonishing $45 million after it transpired that Aruz was still using SNK branding on their pachinko machines after the acquisition, with Aruz losing the copyright infringement court case. Now back in action, 2003 would see SNK Playmore release SNK vs Capcom SVC Chaos, the fighting game with King of Fighters style graphics which features Capcom characters depicted in that very SNK art style for the first time ever. Appearing in the arcades, on the PlayStation 2, Xbox and even Neo Geo AES, in many ways this is the third different major Capcom and SNK crossover game that appeared on home consoles. But with the SNK name being available to be used in gaming once more, this meant that Capcom could go back to working on Capcom vs SNK 3, right? Well, while they could have very well chosen to do this, rather than focus on producing new fighting games, instead Capcom decided to diversify their market away from arcade fighters, much like how SNK had attempted to do so prior. Fighting games were saturated and Capcom had repeatedly gone down a path of producing versus fighters that had become more and more appealing to the hardcore and less and less appealing to the average customer. The genre needed a rest, so Capcom would pump their energy into innovating in other areas for a while. Hideaki Itsuno, the Capcom vs SNK series director, would go on to direct the Devil May Cry series, a franchise that now has an awesome and impressive video game legacy in its very own right. Moving on, years would pass with fighting games eventually seeing a renaissance post Street Fighter 4 with still no Capcom vs SNK being produced. However, Capcom vs SNK series director Hideaki Itsuno still doesn't completely rule out an official third game in the trilogy. Earlier this year, he made it very clear to gamers that he has not yet retired, and confirmed that he still loves the idea of eventually making Capcom vs SNK 3, even revealing that he has two fresh ideas for one-on-one -on -one fighting games lingering in his mind, which he is, for now, still keeping close to his chest.
He stated that at this point, he is just waiting for an opportunity to implement these ideas, providing that Capcom would be willing to give him the right development team and a decent budget. Further to this, he mentions that he is always submitting concepts for new games, fighting games included. However, for now, the fighting games have yet to be chosen. In his Polygon interview, he signs off that he believes the percentage chance of him working on this fighting game before he retires sits somewhere between the 30 and 50% mark, thus meaning that while the original development surrounding the programming of a Capcom vs SNK 3 remains very mysterious, someone who worked on this game still sees a chance of such a title someday becoming a reality. Hopefully, we may be able to see the early 2000s build of Capcom vs SNK 3 at some point. No one can argue that certainly a lot of Stranger Things have ended up being dumped online over the years, with it not entirely being beyond the realms of possibility that this could get leaked at some point down the line too. But for now, that just leaves us all wondering what could have been if Capcom finished their third entry in their trilogy. So, I am Lady Decade, and that was the story of Capcom vs SNK 3, the lost third part in a legendary series. If you enjoyed today's video, why not check out my upload of Street Fighter 2 Rainbow Edition, a bizarre bootleg of Street Fighter 2 that would inspire the release of Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting. Make sure you like this video, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And as is usual at the end of my videos, I would like to give a special thank you to my amazing Patreon backers. So a huge thanks goes out to Lord William J. Scott III, the man who can Boyd Chan, the loveliest chap in the UK, House of the Ted, and the Duke of Bougie, Sebastian Velez, as well as Pi, Damien Wells, Frank1982, Big Papa Pickles, Drone, Tebow Baggins, Sir Landry Does Gaming, Christopher DiVieo, Richard Turnbull, Green Cooper, UK Kraut Gaming, Anthony Ryan Bennett, Brent O'Hara, Timothy Hansmer, Ryan Dacker, Dizzy Koala, Sandbox Larry, Triforce of Shadows, Johnny Holly, OPC, EmuMovies.com, Ben Haradine, Gasper Hello, Sagmeister, Ego, as well as all of the rest of my amazing patrons. Thank you all so much.